Hi YouTube, Mr. Dodo8449 here, and today I'm going to be doing a video, well a tutorial, on how the GEM MER control system works. Uh, basically it's a system for manual controls of points rather than using point motors which are electrical control. Um, so I've done this one here, it's pretty much done, I'm just letting the last bits of the glue dry. So this is this one point here done. And now I'm going to be working on this point closest to us. <clears throat> And yeah, there's a few things you need to obviously go out and buy first of all. You need your uh, lever control, depending on um, how many how many points you want to control. It's possible to control more than one point with one lever. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you wanted to have um, like adjoining points and need to switch at the same time, for say a crossover on a track, you could have one lever to move both of those. It's a little bit more complicated to set up, but it's really quite easy. So um, you need your lever frame, you also need your plastic tubing, now you can buy this in a, in a roll, I think it's a 10 foot roll, um, and you buy it straight from, well just straight out of the store. You also need your wire, now I would recommend buying the gem stuff rather than going to buy your own because this wire here fits perfectly inside the gem mer control plastic tubing, so um, as you can see just about there's the wire on this side and then there's the pipe on this side and they just fit nicely and you can actually slide them in and out. Okay, as well as that you're going to need, um, just for a basic system like me, you're also going to need some right angles. Um, these are those right angles and the way they work quite simply is you've got a mounting plate, whoop, which I've just dropped, you've got a mounting plate there which you stick into the, well you, you hammer that down into the baseboard then you hammer down the right angle thing in the middle and this acts moves like that and uh, if you want if you need to move a right angle bend and you have to use one of these the piping if you're going over a long distance it's possible to curve the piping around um, so it doesn't all need to be dead straight but for this one here it's coming from here to here and up to here so it does need to be 90 degrees so first thing you need to do obviously is find your point locate where it is and then you need to work it in your head where the best route is now in my case it's straight down to here straight along to here there will be another right angle which will then go into this second switch here, the one that's half moved now. So now we've worked out the route, I've already started doing this, I've already stuck down the first piece of uh, wire, it's going from the point underneath this piece of track, as you can see the glue still drying on top of it. Um, I'm just using Yoohoo glue for this one, I've also used PVA glue for the back one, I'm going to find out in a minute which is the best, and if both of them are, don't work, I will go out and buy some super glue and try that. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's all stuck down drying. Now the next thing you need to do is work out where your right angle sits, also you need to think about which way it goes. Now obviously I need to move it this way, up and down like that, which means this one here moves up. So you work out um, how does this work for instance if I did that it wouldn't work uh, if I did it that way because as this one here moves this one here moves in a forward and backwards motion so you've got to kind of think about that um, but I worked out that way is the best way then the, the wire connects onto here which connects the point and this one here goes back to the lever frame so the next stage is to work out where it needs to sit and I've already stuck down this pipe just with one screw to find out so I can move it around a bit like so until it all lines up neatly um, about there I think and I always use a pair of pliers because it says your fingers getting squashed oops didn't quite go to plan anyway yeah you then got to hammer this down It is very fiddly to set this sort of thing up and get it get it right. Don't knock it all the way down because you've got to check it first and if you get it wrong they're really difficult to pull out. Okay that looks about right. Swing it out of the way. Now the next thing you'll do is you've got to bend the wire. Um, let's just push this back round. And the way I bend it is I just grab a pair of pliers, I stick it on in the correct place, and I just twist it 90 degrees upwards, and that seems to work the best. So then, 90 degrees upwards in this case is there. If I can get my tool, I'm going to have to move the camera slightly. I'll move the camera back in a second, but I need to get my tool in the right place. And I am literally just using a pair of pliers, nothing special. Quite 
Beauty. And I'll generally push just slightly past the 90, so when it springs back, it springs back up right. So as you can see, that's now in there. Pulling that back out so I can fit this on first. It's a lot easier if you do it this way rather than trying to push the put the metal piece over the wire afterwards. Find the hole again, there it is. And now then this time knock it all the way down. And you should get it to a stage where it moves quite freely like it does there. So then you need to put in the final two pins that hold it down. So then it's actually been quite a little while since I've done that and as you can see I've got one, two more done. I'll show you that in a minute but as I was saying, just building on this, um, yeah you stick this on then all I did is I just put the pins in and then I actually used like a punch. Uh, one of these mini screwdrivers you can get someone who's got like a hexagon end and they work brilliantly as a punch. So I just placed it on the end and just tapped down on the top to push in those three supports to stop it moving. Obviously the one in the middle is loose so it can, um, well it's not loose, it's, it's in such, so far that this actually moves. Then as all I did is I repeated exactly what I did on this side but going this side to the to the next um, control which I'll show you in a second before it goes into the main control. So if I now move it, you can see and it's moving the point. So it's all working and it's working really well actually. So as you can see I've done one, two, I've, in fact, I've finished it all now and it's all working. So I'll show you that in a minute. But we're going to move down this way. I'm just going to move the light for a second. This is the complicated looking bit but it's incredibly simple. So the one I was working on was this middle one here. Um, so again if I just move the control you can see that one moves on a 90 degrees. It pulls this. That then pulls the one which I've just put together which in turn moves the point. So as you can see, it's just a matter of repeating exactly what we did last time. Um, find where it needs to sit, stick the pin in, create the bend in there, push on the metal piece, um, then push the pin all the way down, fit on the three the three nails that hold down that silver plate on the bottom, before running one from here to the control arm. Now there's lots of movement you can do if you need to extend your length of it. On this arm here, there's actually two holes on either end of the arm. Uh, obviously the closer in towards the centre they are the, the smaller the distance it moves so you can like fine tune like that and on the end of all these levers there's actually three different positions so again the closer to the point well the, the um, hinge point then the shorter the distance it moves uh, uh, moves the metal pieces so obviously it's a lot better like that so then it's actually been quite a little while since I've done that and as you can see I've got one, two more done. I'll show you that in a minute. But as I was saying, just building on this, um, yeah, you stick this on. Then all I did is I just put the pins in, and then I actually used like a punch. Uh, one of these mini screwdrivers. You can get someone who's got like a hexagon end, and they work brilliantly as a punch. So I just placed it on the end and just tapped down on the top to push in those three supports to stop it moving. Obviously, the one in the middle is loose, so it can. Um, well, it's not loose. It's it's in such so far that this actually moves. Then as all I did is I repeated exactly what I did on this side but going this side to the to the next um, control which I'll show you in a second before it goes into the main control. So if I now move it, you can see and it's moving the point. So it's all working and it's working really well actually. So as you can see I've done one, two, I've in fact I've done, finished it all now and it's all working so I'll show you that in a minute. But we're going to move down this way, I'm just going to move the light for a second. This is the complicated looking bit, but it's incredibly simple. So the one I was working on was this middle one here. Um, so again, if I just move the control, you can see that one moves on a 90 degrees. It pulls this, that then pulls the one which I've just put together, which in turn moves the point. So as you can see, it's just a matter of repeating exactly what we did last time. Um, find where it needs to sit, stick the pin in, create the bend in there, push on the metal piece, um, then push the pin all the way down, fit on the three the three nails that hold down that silver plate on the bottom before running one from here to the control arm. Now there's lots of movement you can do if you need to extend your length of it. On this arm here, there's actually two holes on either end of the arm. Um, obviously the closer in towards the centre they are, the, the smaller the distance it moves, so you can like fine tune like that. And on the end of all these levers there's actually three different positions, so again the closer to the point well, the, the um, hinge point, then the shorter the distance it moves, 
uh, moves the metal pieces so obviously it's a lot better like that so yeah, I'm going to move it into this box here, and obviously then it's just a manual point move. Now the only thing I want to say, this is system is designed for double O gauge, which means I can only move these two that far before it's completely moved the point and it's now pulling everything tight. The reason for that is obviously double O gauge points are bigger, the throw on the switch on the point is bigger, so it loses a lot further. Now these two here, actually I can go the whole way. Um, this one's a bit tight, but this one here, the reason it goes the whole way is because there's a lot of play in this joint here that runs between the right angle and the control and it works absolutely perfectly um, the points move beautifully so it really doesn't bother me so I am going to be building a stop basically um, on these two middle ones that stop it going no further than that and I don't know if that's going to be a bit of glue or metal or what so then um, yeah I'll just move this point here you can see the switch and everything move as you can see as I just move it the points move beautifully um, and then this one over there and finally this one so you can see from this one point here I'm able to control all the points on the whole layout now you might remember my designer said I'm putting a station on here so it's going to be a um, a cardboard station and it's going to have hollow bits where these pipes will come out of so you won't actually see this joint and this joint here but you'll see the rest of them perfectly fine um, this was just the only way I could really do this so it's just something I had to deal with but anyway so these will be hidden basically underneath the station platform but I think um, it will look quite good with the pipes and everything moving now I'll just say finally I used Yoohoo glue to eventually stick all this down. The main reason for that is it works really well and number one it dries very quickly um, and it holds nice and firm so as you can see it's not moving anywhere which is brilliant news. Wood glue does work but it just takes too long to dry so I'd really recommend doing this. So hopefully that's quite a good tutorial everyone. Um, you now know what Merc Control is and you now will hopefully use it. It is a great system to use, really realistic but it's very very fiddly to set up and you have to make it work before you even start on scenery and stuff so I'm really happy with the way that's gone so yeah thanks for watching if you have any comments any questions leave them below and i will get back to you as soon as i can